Friends, we're reading the Holy Shiv Puran at Guruji Ka Ashram, New Jersey, every Monday after the Mantra Jab. So if you're interested in participating in the reading, kindly reach out to Seema Aunty, me or Rashmi Aunty. Uh, a brief synopsis for the last uh, reading that we had. Last, we, uh, last time we read Chapter 40 of Rudra Samhita Part 3. In this we read that uh, Lord Shiva received the letter of betrothal from the kinsman of Himavad and he honored the letter by allowing it to be read aloud amongst uh, the, the crowd and uh, also accepting the proposal of marriage uh, to Parvati. After that he instructed Narada to invite all the gods and sages and siddhas for his marriage procession and Narada did as instructed. Now all the, the entire city of Kailasha was submerged in festivities as all the gods arrived there with their wives and children and Lord Shiva himself received all the guests. Now after this uh, Lord Vishnu started the procession, the preparation for the procession of Lord Shiva and uh, Lord Brahma performed the Vedic rites along with the other Siddhas and sages. The mothers of the universe, the seven mothers of the universe bedecked the Lord in a befitting manner and Lord Shiva bedazzled and his beauty was indescribable. Now after that uh, uh, the marriage procession was after the social and the Vedic rites were finished, uh, Lord Shiva allowed the marriage procession to start and he allowed the Brahmins and the gods and the Siddhas to be ahead of him. Now after that uh, uh, when uh, they moved outside of Kailasha, a little before that, they, he also instructed Nandin and other Ganas to accompany him in his procession. And he also instructed them to keep some of the Ganas back at Kailasha and bring all the others for, him, for the marriage. So the Lord of the Ganas brought thousands and crores of Ganas to the procession uh, of uh, the Shiva's procession. And these Ganas, they had matted hair, they had uh, uh, ashes smeared all over their body. They had three eyes and blue neck just like Lord Shiva and uh, they were uh, excited in the procession. Uh, behind them were enthusiastic gods and siddhas and sages, the mothers of the universe, the celestial virgins, the guardians of the quarters, the wives of the gods and all others. Indra came on Eravat, Vishnu came on Garuda and all. Even uh, Rudra's sister Chandi came there and she was in festive mood but she terrorized others uh, because of her appearance and her way of celebration. And this way uh, all the gods and siddhas and everybody participated in the festivities. The Lord himself was seated on a bull named Dharma and uh, he was being served by sages and gods and the entire procession of this, uh, uh, the marriage procession then led to Himagri with all the gods and siddhas participating in the celebration. Today we will be reading chapter 41, which is uh, the description of the altar structure. Chapter 42, which is the description of the meeting of the Lord with the mountain. And chapter 43, which is the description of Shiva's wonderful sport. Urvashi Aunty will be reading in English and Ashwini Uncle will be reading in Hindi. Jai Guruji. Guruji, Anantam Shukrana for this Seva. Chapter 41. Description of the altar structure. Brahma said, Then after mutual consultation and getting Shiva's permission, O sage, Vishnu sent you ahead to the abode of the mountain. Urged by Vishnu, O Narada, you bowed to Lord Shiva and went ahead to all to the abode of Himavat. O sage, after going there, you saw your own image made by Vishwakarma and were surprised. You were a bit ashamed too. O oh great sage, tired of seeing the portrayal of yourself, you became engaged in seeing the other bills of Vishwakarma. You entered the great altar of Himavat, studded with various gems and decorated with gold pots and stumps of plantain trees. It had a thousand columns. It was wonderful. O oh sage, you were struck with surprise on seeing the altars. Then you were a bit confused and greatly bewildered. You spoke to the Lord, you spoke to the Lord of Mountains thus, O Lord of Mountains, tell me the truth. 
has lord shiva seated on his bull and surrounded by his ganas come already for the marriage have the gods with vishnu and others at their head the sages the siddhas and the secondary gods come already brahma said on hearing your words full of surprise o sage the mountain himavat told you the truth himavat said o narada o highly intelligent one shiva with the marriage party has not come till now for the purpose of marrying parvati o narada know that all these things have been portrayed by vishvakarma o celestial sage shake off your bewilderment be calm remember shiva showing kindness to me you take your food and rest for a while then gladly accompany menka and others to shiva's presence accompanied by these mountains you request shiva along with the gods and the great sages shiva who who sprout like feet are worshiped by gods and demons bring them here brahma said you accepted the suggestion noble heartedly and performed the duties there then accompanied by the sons of the mountain and others you went to shiva's presence there the brilliant god shiva surrounded by the gods and others was seen and bowed to by you and the mountains with devotion then all the gods including indra vishnu and me and shiva's attendants asked you o oh sage they had been struck with surprise and suspicion on seeing the mountains menaka saya meru and others bedecked in all kinds of ornaments the god said o oh narada intelligent one you appear to be bewildered have you been duly honored by himavat or not tell us in detail why have these excellent mountains menaka saya meru and others highly bedecked and of great valor come here o oh narada does the mountain really intend to give his daughter to shiva or not what is it that is taking place in the abode of himavat now please tell us we are having doubts in our minds hence we the heaven dwellers asked you please say everything o righteous one and dispel our suspicions brahma said on hearing these words of vishnu and other heaven dwellers o sage you who had been fascinated by the magic of swastik vishvakarma spoke to them going to an isolated place o sage you spoke these words to me to vishnu and also to indra who is the lord of gods and a former enemy of the mountains having cut off their wings narada said the distorted portrayal of heaven dwellers is something enchanting he desires to delude the gods in a loving but cunning manner o lord of sachi have you forgotten everything formerly you had deluded him hence he wishes to surpass you here in the abode of the mountain of noble heart i have been fascinated by my shining portrait vishnu brahma and indra have been realistically portrayed by him o lord of gods why should i talk too much he has made artificial prototypes of all the gods no one not a single detail has been left out it is for the purpose of particularly enchanting the gods that this spell has been employed by him through this caricature brahma said on hearing your words lord indra who was frightened from head to foot immediately spoke to vishnu lord indra said o lord of lakshmi o lord of gods swastir who is agitated due to the grief over his son will surely kill me under this pretext and not otherwise brahma said on hearing his words vishnu the lord of gods laughingly consoled indra by speaking thus vishnu said o lord of sachi formerly you had been enchanted by the demon nivata kavachas your previous enemies by the power of the great spell o indra at my instance this mountain himavat and others too were rendered wingless let the mountains not create magic on remembering that and wish to surpass us foolishly we are not to be afraid of our enemies o indra shiva favorably disposed to his devotees will undoubtedly look to our welfare while he was speaking this to indra of agitated mind shiva spoke to vishnu following the worldly custom shiva said o vishnu lord of gods what are you speaking to each other o sage after speaking thus to them shiva addressed you o narada what does the great mountain say tell me the truth with details you must not keep any secret does the mountain want to give the daughter or not tell me that quickly o dear one on going there what did you see what did you do tell me that quickly brahma said addressed thus by shiva o sage you endowed with divine vision told him secretly what you saw in the altar narada said 
O great Lord, Lord of God, listen to my auspicious words. O Lord, there is no fear of any hindrance in the celebration of marriage. The Lord of mountains will surely give his daughter to you. It is certainly to take you there that these mountains have come here. But to delude the gods, a wonderful spell has been created. O omniscient, it is only to inspire curiosity. There is no possibility of any obstacle. O Lord, Vishwakarma, a great expert in creating illusion, had constructed a peculiar altar in his house at his instance. It is full of surprising things. A fascinating assembly of gods has been built there. On seeing it, I was deluded by his skill and was struck with surprise. Brahma said, Oh dear, on hearing your words, the Lord Shiva, following the worldly convention, laughingly spoke to Vishnu and other gods. Shiva said, O oh Vishnu, if the mountain Himavad gives his daughter to me, what have I to do with his spell? Speak to me what is true. O oh Brahma, O oh Indra, O oh sages, O oh gods, speak truly. What have I to do with the spell if the mountain gives his daughter? It is held by scholars, knowing cogent reasons that somehow or other the fruit should be achieved. Hence you, with Vishnu at the head, will hasten seekingly only the task on hand. Brahma said, Discussing thus with gods, Shiva appeared to be completely overpowered by Kama like an ordinary man. At the bidding of Shiva, Vishnu and other gods, the noble sages and others, O sage, kept you and mountains at the head and started for the abode of Himavat. They were surprised to see the wonderful abode. The delighted Shiva reached the outskirts of the city, accompanied by Vishnu and others, as well as his delighted Ganas. Chapter 42 Description of the meeting of the Lord and the mountain. Brahma said, On hearing that the all-pervading Shiva had come very near his city, the Lord of mountains Himavat rejoiced much. Then, gathering all the requisite things, he sent mountains and the Brahmins to welcome Shiva. With his mind melting with devotion and joyously praising his luck, the mountain personally went to see Shiva as dear as the very vital air. On seeing the army of the gods, Himavat was struck with wonder. Considering himself blessed, he appeared in front of them. The gods too were struck with wonder on seeing his army. The gods and the mountains became delighted. The vast army of the mountains and the gods, O sage, on coming together shone like the eastern and western oceans in juxtaposition. Meeting each other, the gods and the mountains considered themselves blessed. They were greatly delighted. Seeing Shiva in front, Himavat bowed to him. The mountains and the Brahmin bowed to Sadashiv. He was seated on his bull, fully bedecked in ornaments and beaming in the face. The beauty of his divine person illuminated the quarters. His body shone in the delicate silken garments. His crown was lustrous with the gems set in it. He was smiling, shedding pure brilliance everywhere. Serpents had transformed themselves into ornaments on his body. He had a wonderful luster and a divine refulgence. God served him with chauris in their hands. Vishnu was standing in the left, Brahma to the right, Indra at his back. Behind, on either side, the gods were standing. He was being eulogized by the gods and others. He looked benevolent to the people. Being one, he had assumed different physical bodies for his own reasons. He was Brahman itself, the lord of all and the bestower of boons. He was both with or without attributes, subservient to the devotees, merciful, greater than primordial being and primordial nature, existence, knowledge and bliss itself. The mountain saw Vishnu, bedecked in ornaments and seated on Garuda to the right of Lord Shiva. O sage, to the, to the left of the Lord stood I, the four-faced deity, shining brilliantly and accompanied by my attendants. On seeing us both, great favorites of Shiva, forever, the Lord of mountains with all his retinue respectfully bowed to us. Similarly, on seeing the gods and others brilliantly shining behind Lord Shiva, and at, his, and at his sides, the Lord of Mountains bowed to them. At the bidding of Shiva, the mountain went ahead to his city. Behind him went Vishnu, Brahma, the sages, and the gods. O Narada, the sages, the gods, and others accompanying the Lord, praised the city of Himavat with great delight. Stationing the gods and others on his beautiful summit, specially arranged for them, Himavat went to the place where the altar for, for the rites had been erected. After causing squares and quadrangles to be made, 
the festoons he performed the ceremonial ablutions gave charitable gifts and supervised everything then he sent his sons to shiva accompanied by all his attendants and followers vishnu and others the extremely delighted lord of mountains in the company of his kinsmen desired to perform the reception to the bridegroom with great pomp and ceremony the sons of the mountain accompanied by the relatives went to shiva and acquainted him with the request of the mountain the sons of the mountain came back to their abode with his permission and informed the king of the mountains gladly that the bridegroom and the party were on their way there o sage on hearing the request thus made vishnu and other gods with the lord rejoiced much dressed richly and exquisitely the gods the ganas the sages and others started towards the abode of lord himavat in the meantime mena desired to see shiva o sage through her lord you the excellent sage were requisitioned there o sage urged by the lord who desired to fulfill the task of shiva you went there o sage after bowing to you mena with her heart full of surprise told you that she wanted to see the real form of lord shiva that dispels haughtiness chapter 43 description of shiva's wonderful sport mena said o sage i shall first see the bridegroom of parvati let me have an idea of the form and features of shiva for which she performed the great penance brahma said thus urged by ignorance o sage she went to the terrace along with you to see shiva then shiva realizing her false pride in herself spoke to vishnu and me as a part of his wonderful sport shiva said at my bidding o oh dear ones both of you go one by one accompanied by the gods to the threshold of the mountain i shall follow afterwards brahma said on hearing it vishnu called all and told them of his suggestion the gods then walked in accordance with that suggestion enthusiastically o oh sage the lord of the universe let mena stand on the terrace and see the procession along with you in order to make her mind confused in the meantime seeing the splendid vast army o oh sage mena became delighted as usual at the head of procession came the beautiful fastidious gandharvas dressed in rich clothes and bedecked in fine ornaments they rode on different vehicles they played on musical instruments flags and banners of various colors and sizes fluttered on their chariots the heavenly names accompanied them on seeing vasu the lord of vasus along with the vasus mena became delighted and exclaimed oh this is shiva oh excellent sage you told her these are only the attendants of shiva this is not shiva the bridegroom on hearing this mena fell a thinking a person greater than this ha how will he be in the meantime she saw manigriva the other yakshas and their vast army with twice the splendor of vasus on seeing the lustrous manigriva the lord of yakshas mena was delighted and said this is shiva the bridegroom of parvati this is not shiva the bridegroom of parvati he is only an attendant of shiva said you to mena the wife of the mountain but by that time the god of fire passed by on seeing his splendor twice that of yakshas she said this is shiva the bridegroom of parvati but you said no by that time jama passed by with twice the splendor of the previous one on seeing him delighted mena exclaimed this is shiva no said you by that time mirti the lord of punya yagnas passed by having twice the splendor of yama on seeing him the delighted mena said this is shiva no said you to her by that time varuna passed that way on seeing his splendor twice that of mirti she said this is shiva the bridegroom of parvati but you said no by that time vayu passed by with twice the splendor of varuna on seeing him the delighted mena said this is shiva no said you by that time kubera the lord of guyakas passed by with twice the splendor of vayu on seeing him the delighted mena said this is shiva no said you to her by that time ishana passed by on seeing his splendor twice that of kubera she said this is rud the bridegroom of parvati but you said no then came indra the most important of all the gods the lord of the three worlds endowed with divine refulgence and who had twice the splendor of ishana on seeing him manika said this is shiva not he said you then this is indra the lord of gods 
By that time, the moon passed by with twice the splendor of Indra. On seeing him, she said, This is Shiva, and you denied it. By that time, the sun passed by with twice the splendor of the moon. On seeing him, she said, It is he. You said to her, No. By that time, Bhrigu and other sages, all highly lustrous and accompanied by their disciples, passed by. On seeing Braspati in their midst, Menika said, This is Shiva, the master of Parvati. Then you said no. By that time Brahma passed by. He was in an excellent form of lustre, praised by excellent sages and looking like an embodied dharma itself. O sage, seeing me, the highly delighted Mena said, This is Parvati's husband. You said to her no. In the meantime, Lord Vishnu came that way. He looked glorious and splendid, dark blue like the fresh cloud and having four arms. He had the handsome features of numberless cupids. He wore yellow garments. He was the king of heaven with eyes resembling the petals of a lotus and looked very calm. He had Garuda as his vehicle. He possessed all the characteristic signs, conch, etc. He was bedecked in crown and other ornaments. He wore Shivasta on his chest. He had an uncommon splendor that was incomprehensible. On seeing him, Mena's eyes became dazed. With great delight, she said, This is Shiva himself, the bridegroom of Parvati. There is no doubt about it. On hearing Menaka's words, you said, No, this is not the Lord, the cause of protection and enjoyment. This is not the bridegroom of Parvati. This is Vishnu, the officer in charge of the marriage party of Shiva and a great favorite of Shiva. The bridegroom Shiva is better than him. O Mena, it is impossible for me to describe his beauty. He is the Lord of the entire universe, the Lord of all, the self-emperor. Brahma said, On hearing your words, Mena thought her daughter is auspicious, rich, fortunate, and harbinger of happiness for the three families. Her face was beaming with pleasure and her heart was delighted. Frequently congratulating herself on her good luck, she said. Mena said, By the birth of Parvati, I have become blessed in every respect. The Lord of Mountains too is blessed. Everything connected with me is blessed. Her would-be husband is the Lord of these leaders of great lustre whom I have seen now. How can I describe her good luck even in hundred years? It is impossible to describe it when I see the lustre of these leaders. Brahma said, Thus spoke Mena with her mind full of love and hope. By that time Shiva, the wonderful source of enjoyment and protection, came that way. He showed himself in his real form, free from change of illusion. Oh dear, the ganas of wonderful forms proved to be the dispeller of Mena's pride. O sage Narada, on seeing him come, you lovingly pointed him out to her as the bridegroom of Shiva and spoke to her. Narada said, This is Shiva himself, O comely maiden, see. It was for him that Parvati performed a great penance in the forest. Brahma said, Thus addressed by you, the delighted Mena stared at the Lord with joy, the Lord Ishana of wonderful features and of wonderful attendants. Immediately the army of Shiva came there, consisting of wonderful arrays of Bhutas, Pretas and Ganas. Some were in the form of violent gusts of wind, producing hissing sounds with waving flags. Some had crooked faces, others were deformed. Some were awful with overgrown mustaches and beards. Some were lame, some were blind, some held staffs and nooses, and some great iron clubs in their hands. Some rode on peculiar vehicles, some played on horns, some played on drums, some played on dumrus, some played on gomukhas. Some had no faces, some had distorted and deformed faces, some had many faces, some had no hands, others had deformed hands, some of them had many hands. Some had no eyes, some had many eyes, some had no head, some had deformed heads, some had no ears, some had many ears. The Ganas had all types of dresses and features. Such and other innumerable deformed Ganas, heroic and terrible, strong and strenuous, passed by, O oh dear. O oh sage, you pointed out the Ganas of Shiva to her with your finger and said, O oh lovely lady, see the attendants of Shiva and Shiva himself. O oh sage, on seeing the innumerable Ganas, Bhutas and Tetas, Menaka was terribly frightened instantaneously. On seeing Shiva in their midst, the mother of Parvati trembled. She saw Shiva, who though devoid of attributes, was better than those who had all the attributes. He was seated on the bull, 
He had five faces and three eyes. He had ashes smeared over the body. He had matted hair with the crescent moon on his head. He had ten hands with the skull in one of them. His upper cloth was tiger's height. He held the bow of Pinaka in one of his hands and the trident in another. He had odd eyes, ugly features, utterly disheveled and untidy. He wore the hide of an elephant. She was stunned, tremulous, agitated and confused. You said to her, this is Shiva and pointed him out to her. On hearing your words, she fell on the ground like a tender creeper blown by the wind. Mena, the chaste lady, was grief-stricken. What is this? I have been deceived for being too ambitious. Of what use is it to see this deformity? Saying this, Manika fell unconsciousness. Seeing this, Manika fell unconscious there in a trice. Her maids exerted themselves in various ways and attended on her. Then gradually she, the beloved of the Lord of Mountains, regained consciousness. This concludes English reading. Now Ashwin uncle will read in Hindi. Jai Guru ki. Thank you. हिमवान द्वारा शिव की बरात की आगवानी तथा सबका अभिनंदन एवं वंदन मेना का नारद जी को बुलाकर उनसे बरातियों का परिचय पाना तथा शिव और उनके गणों का गणों को देखकर भय से मूर्छित होना ब्रह्मा जी कहते हैं तदनंतर भगवान शिव ने नारद जी को हिमाचल के घर भेजा वे वहां की विलक्षण सजावट देखकर दंग रह गए विश्वकर्मा ने जो विष्णु ब्रह्मा आदि समस्त देवताओं तथा नारद आदि ऋषियों की चेतन सी प्रतीत होने वाली मूर्तियां बनाई थी उन्हें देखकर देव ऋषि नारद चकित हो उठे तत्पश्चात हिमाचल ने देव ऋषि को बरात बुलाकर लाने के लिए भेजा साथ ही उस बरात की अगवानी के लिए मैनाक आदि पर्वत भी गए तदनंतर विष्णु आदि देवताओं तथा आनंदित हुए अपने गणों के साथ भगवान शिव हिमालय नगर के समीप सानंद आ पहुंचे गिरिराज हिमवान ने जब यह सुना कि सर्वव्यापी शंकर मेरे नगर के निकट आ पहुंचे हैं तब उन्हें बड़ी प्रसन्नता हुई तदनंतर उन्होंने बहुत सा सामान एकत्र करके पर्वतों और ब्राह्मणों का ब्राह्मणों को महादेव जी के साथ वार्तालाप करने के लिए भेजा स्वयं भी बड़ी भक्ति के साथ वे प्राण प्यारे महेश्वर का, का दर्शन करने के लिए गए उस समय उनका हृदय अधिक प्रेम के कारण द्रवित हो रहा था और वे प्रसन्नता पूर्वक अपने सौभाग्य की सराहना करते थे उस समय समस्त देवताओं की सेना को उपस्थित देख हिमवान को बड़ा विस्मय हुआ और वे अपने को धन्य मानते हुए अपने सामने गए देवता और पर्वत एक दूसरे से मिलकर बहुत प्रसन्न हुए और अपने आप को कृत सित्य मानने लगे महादेव जी को सामने देखकर हिमालय ने उन्हें प्रणाम किया साथ ही समस्त पार्वत पर्वतों और ब्राह्मणों ने भी सदा शिव की वंदना की वे वृषभ पर आरूढ़ थे उनके मुख पर प्रसन्नता छा रही थी वे नाना प्रकार के आभूषणों से विभूषित थे और अपने दिव्य अंगों के लावण्य से संपूर्ण दिशाओं को प्रकाशित कर रहे थे उनका श्री अंग अत्यंत महीन नूतन और सुंदर रेशमी वस्त्र से सुशोभित था उनके मस्तक का मुकुट उत्तम रत्नों से जटित होने के कारण सब बड़ी शोभा पा रहा था वे अपनी पावन प्रभा का प्रसार करते हुए हंस रहे थे उनका प्रत्येक अंग भूषण बने हुए सर्पों से युक्त था तथा उनकी अंग कांति बड़ी अद्भुत दिखाई देती थी दिव्य कांति से संपन्न उन महेश्वर की सुरेश्वर गण हाथ में चंवर लिए सेवा कर रहे थे उनके बाएं भाग में भगवान विष्णु थे और दाहिने भाग में मैं था पीछे देवराज इंद्र थे और अन्य देवता आदि भी पीछे तथा अगल बगल में विद्यमान थे नाना प्रकार के देवता आदि उन लोक कल्याणकारी भगवान शंकर की स्तुति करते जाते थे उन्होंने स्वेच्छा से ही दिव्य शरीर धारण कर रखा था वास्तव में वे साक्षात पर ब्रह्म परमात्मा सबके ईश्वर उपासकों को मनोवांछित वर देने वाले कल्याण में गुणों से युक्त प्राकृत गुणों से रहित भक्तों के अधीन रहने वाले सब पर कृपा करने वाले प्रकृति और पुरुष से भी विलक्षण तथा सचिदानंद स्वरूप हैं उनके दर्शन के पश्चात हिमवान ने भगवान शिव के वाम भाग में अच्युत 
श्री हरि का दर्शन दिया किया जो नाना प्रकार के आभूषणों से विभूषित हो विनता नंदन गरुड़ की पीठ पर विराजमान थे मुने भगवान के दाहिने भाग में उन्होंने चार मुखों से युक्त महाशोभाशाली तथा अपने परिवार से संयुक्त मुझ ब्रह्मा को देखा भगवान शिव के सदा ही अत्यंत प्रिय इन दोनों देवेश्वरों का दर्शन करके परिवार सहित गिरिराज ने आदर पूर्वक प्रणाम किया इसी प्रकार भगवान शिव के पीछे तथा अगल बगल में खड़े हुए दीप्तिमान देवता आदि को भी देखकर गिरिराज ने उन सबके सामने मस्तक झुकाया तत्पश्चात शिव की आज्ञा से आगे होकर हिमवान अपने नगर को गए उनके साथ महादेव जी भगवान विष्णु तथा स्वयं भू ब्रह्मा भी मुनियों और देवताओं सहित शीघ्रता पूर्वक चलने लगे मुने उस अवसर पर मैना के मन में भगवान शिव के दर्शन करने की इच्छा हुई इसलिए उन्होंने तुमको बुलवाया उस समय भगवान शिव से प्रेरित होकर उनका हार्दिक अभिप्राय पूर्ण करने की इच्छा से तुम वहां गए मैना तुम्हें प्रणाम करके बोली मुने गिरिजा के होने वाले पति को पहले मैं देखूंगी शिव का कैसा रूप है जिनके लिए मेरी बेटी ने ऐसी उत्कृष्ट तपस्या की है तात उस समय भगवान शिव जी शिव भी मेना के भीतर के अहंकार को जानकर श्री विष्णु और मुझसे अद्भुत लीला करते हुए बोले शिव ने कहा तात आप दोनों मेरी आज्ञा से देवताओं सहित अलग अलग होकर गिरिराज के द्वार पर चलिए हम पीछे से आएंगे यह सुनकर भगवान श्री हरि ने सब देवताओं को बुलाकर वैसा करने के लिए कहा शिव के चिंतन में तत्पर रहने वाले समस्त देवताओं ने शीघ्र वैसी ही व्यवस्था करके उत्सुकता पूर्वक वहां से पृथक पृथक यात्रा की मुने मीना अपने मकान के सबसे ऊपरी भवन में तुम्हारे साथ खड़ी थी उस समय भगवान विश्वेश्वर ने अपने को ऐसी वेशभूषा में दिखाया जिससे मेना के हृदय को ठेस पहुंची सबसे पहले बारात के जुलूस में विविध वाहनों पर विराजित खूब सजे धजे बाजे गाजे सात पताकाएं पहराते हुए वसु आदि गंधर्व आए फिर मनीग्रीवादी यक्ष तदनंतर क्रम से यमराज नीरिति वरुण वायु कुबेर ईशान देवराज इंद्र चंद्रमा सूर्य भृगु आदि मुनिश्वर तथा ब्रह्मा आए ये सब उत्तरोत्तर एक से एक विशेष सुंदर शोभा में रूप गुण से संपन्न थे इनमें से प्रत्येक दल के स्वामी को देखकर मीना पूछती थी कि क्या यही शिव हैं? नारद जी कहते यह तो शिव के सेवक हैं मीना यह सुनकर बड़ी प्रसन्न होती और हर्ष में भरकर मनी मन कहती ये उनके सेवक ही सब इतने सुंदर हैं तब वे सबके स्वामी शिव तो पता नहीं कितने सुंदर होंगे इसी बीच में भगवान विष्णु पधारे वे संपूर्ण शोभा से संपन्न श्रीमान नूतन जलधर के समान श्याम और तथा तथा चार भुजाओं से संयुक्त थे उनका लावण्य करोड़ों कंदर्पों को लज्जित कर रहा था वे पीताम्बर धारण करके अपनी सहज प्रभा से प्रकाशित हो रहे थे उनके सुंदर नेत्र प्रफुल कमल की शोभा को छीन लेते थे उनकी आकृति से शांति बरत रही थी पक्षीराज गरुड़ उनके वाहन थे शंख चक्र आदि लक्षणों से युक्त मुकुट आदि से विभूषित वक्ष तल में श्रीवत्स का चिहन धारण किए ये लक्ष्मीपति विष्णु अपने आप प्रेम आप प्रमे प्रभा पुंज से प्रकाशमान थे उन्हें देखते ही मेना के नेत्र चकित हो गए वे बड़े हर्ष से बोली अवश्य ये ही मेरे शिवा के पति साक्षात भगवान शिव हैं इसमें संशय नहीं है मुने तुम भी लीला करने वालों वाले ही ठहरे अतः मीना की यह बात सुनकर उनसे बोले देवी ये शिवा के पति नहीं है अपीति भगवान केशव हरि है भगवान शंकर के संपूर्ण कार्यों के अधिकारी तथा उनके प्रिय हैं पार्वती के पति जो दुले शिव हैं उन्हें इनसे भी बढ़कर समझना चाहिए उनकी शोभा का वर्णन मुझसे नहीं हो सकता वे ही संपूर्ण ब्रह्मांड के अधिपति सर्वेश्वर तथा स्वयं प्रकाश परमात्मा है ब्रह्मा जी कहते हैं नारद तुम्हारी इस बात को सुनकर मीना ने उन शुभल शना उमा को महान धन वैभव से संपन्न सौभाग्यवती तथा तीनों कुलों के लिए सुखदायी माना वे मुख पर प्रसन्नता लाकर प्रीति युक्त हृदय से अपने सर्वाधिक सौभाग्य का बारंबार वर्णन करती हुई बोली मीना ने कहा इस समय मैं पार्वती को जन्म देने के कारण सर्वथा धन्य हो गई ये गिरीश्वर भी धन्य है तथा मेरा सब कुछ परम धन्य हो गया जिन जिन अत्यंत तेजस्वी देवताओं 
और देवेश्वरों को मैंने दर्शन किया है इन सब के जो पति हैं वे मेरी पुत्री के पति होंगे उसके सौभाग्य का क्या वर्णन किया जाए भगवान शिव को पति रूप में पाने के कारण पार्वती के सौभाग्य का सौ वर्षो में भी वर्णन किया नहीं किया जा सकता ब्रह्मा जी कहते हैं नारद मेना ने प्रेम पूर्ण हृदय से ज्यू ही उपरयुक्त बात कही क्यों ही अद्भुत लीला करने वाले भगवान रुद्र सामने आ गए तात उनके सभी गण अद्भुत तथा मेना के अहंकार को चूर करने वाले थे भगवान शिव अपने आप को माया से निर्लिप्त एवं निर्विकार दिखाते हुए वहां आए मुने उन्हें आया जान तुमने मेना को शिवा के पति का दर्शन कराते हुए उनसे इस प्रकार कहा सुंदरी देखो ये साक्षात भगवान शंकर हैं जिनकी प्राप्ति के लिए शिवा ने वन में बड़ी भारी तपस्या की है तुम्हारे ऐसा कहने पर मीना ने बड़ी प्रसन्नता के साथ अद्भुत आकार वाले भगवान महेश्वर को और देखा वे स्वयं तो अद्भुत थे ही उनके अनुचर भी बड़े अद्भुत थे इतने में ही रुद्रदेव की परम अद्भुत सेना भी आ पहुंची जो भूत प्रेत आदि से संयुक्त तथा नाना गणों से संपन्न थी उनमें से कितने ही बवंडर का रूप धारण करके आए थे कितने ही पताका की मरमर ध्वनि के समान शब्द करते थे इन्हीं के मुंह टेढ़े थे तो कोई अत्यंत कुरूप दिखाई देते थे कुछ बड़े विकराल थे इन्हीं का मुंह दाढ़ी मुंह से भरा हुआ था कोई लंगड़े थे तो कोई अंधे कोई दंड और पाश धारण किए हुए थे और किन्हीं के हाथों में मुदगर थे कितने ही अपने वाहनों को उल्टा चला रहे थे कोई सींग कोई डमरू और कोई गोमुख बजाते थे गनों में से कितने के तो मुंह ही नहीं थे कितनों के मुख पीठ की ओर लगे थे और बहुतों के बहुतेरे मुख थे इसी तरह कोई बिना हाथ के इन्हीं के हाथ उल्टे लग रहे थे कितनों के बहुत से हाथ थे कितने ही नेत्रहीन थे किन्हीं के बहुत से नेत्र थे किन्हीं के सिर ही नहीं थे और किन्हीं के बहुत खराब सिर थे किन्हीं के कान ही नहीं थे और किन्हीं के बहुत से कान थे इस तरह सभी गण नाना प्रकार की वेशभूषा धारण किए हुए थे तात वे विकृत आकार वाले अनेक प्रबल गण बड़े वीर और भयंकर थे उनकी कोई संख्या नहीं थी मुने तुमने अंगुली द्वारा रुद्रगणों को दिखाते हुए मीना से कहा वरान ने तुम पहले भगवान हर के सेवकों को देखो फिर उनका भी दर्शन करना उन अस्तंख असंख्य भूत प्रेत आदि गणों को देखकर मीना तत्काल भय से व्याकुल हो व्याकुल हो गई उनके बीच में भगवान शंकर भी थे जो निर्गुण होते हुए भी परम गुणवान थे वे वृषभ पर स्वार थे उनके पांच मुख थे और प्रत्येक मुख में तीन तीन नेत्र उनके सारे अंगों में विभूति लगी हुई थी जो उनके लिए भूषण का काम देती थी मस्तक पर जटा जूत और चंद्रमा का मुकुट दस हाथ और उनमें से एक में कपाल लिए शरीर पर बागंबर का द्रिपट्टा द्रिप, द्रिप, और हाथ में पिनाक एवं त्रिशूल आंखें भयानक आकृति विकराल और हाथी की खाल का वस्त्र यह सब देखकर शिवा की माता बहुत डर गई चकित हो गई व्याकुल होकर कांपने लगी और बुद्धि चकरा गई उस अवस्था में तुमने उंगली से दिखाते हुए उनसे कहा ये ही है भगवान शिव तुम्हारी यह बात सुनकर सती मेना दुख से भर गई और हवा के झोंके खाकर गिर गई लता के समान तुरंत भूमि पर गिर पड़ी यह कैसा विकृत दृश्य है मैं दुराग्रह में पड़कर ठगी गई यू कहकर मेना उसी उसी क्षण मूर्छित हो गई तदनंतर सखियों ने जब नाना प्रकार के उपाय करके उनकी समुचित सेवा की तब गिरिराज प्रिया मेना धीरे धीरे होश में आई अध्याय इकतालीस से तिरतालीस मार्क और इसके साथ ही हम आज की रीडिंग कंक्लूड करते हैं थैंक यू जय गुरु